Hi guys, we're back again here. Um, this time we're back with Joey after a rusty start last time. Joey's back with some focusing on rust to improve the look of our models. So I'll get straight into this. Over to you, Joey, and take it away. How you doing, guys? Hold on one second. Let's do this here. Well, it's great to be back, and I'm, I hope that Mike can come back on and do another clinic with us. He does some excellent model railroading. Um, today, we're going to learn how to do some simple, simple rust techniques, and some of the techniques I'm going to show you are very inexpensive as well as very forgiving. So um, <clears throat> some of the um, techniques I'm going to show you are stuff that you can simply do with some um, simple materials, and uh, one of them is using... Just a simple um, cleaning sponge that you get at the dollar store. Um, and um, we're going to show, let's see, another one will be using some good old Q-tips. All right. And um, some little simple, simple brushes that we can uh, um, use to uh, show some simple rust techniques. So we're going to go over to the workbench here. But first, I'm going to show you um, a couple of examples on how these techniques look as uh, well the results of these techniques here uh, let's see so here's the top of a roof of the uh, one of the box cars I recently finished and then we have here Another type of box car, uh, different kind of um, colors and textures for the rust. And we're going to show you how to do all this stuff today. <clears throat> Let's see here. Here's a dummy unit that I built. Uh, we paint a little bit of a toaster on the top here. And the rooftop, it's uh, some rust on the top there. And this is a this is one I am doing for a. Um, <clears throat> A client of mine and uh, let's see here's the prototype and so we're replicating this prototype here and these are all simple simple techniques that anybody can do they are so forgiving um, and the reason why they're so forgiving we're not using oils <laughs> um, I like I enjoy I enjoy using watercolors, goo wash, partic particularly uh, goo wash colors, and some acrylics. And so we're gonna go right to the bench here. So I'll give me a second. Let's go down this <laughs> way. In my beautiful workbench here. So I'm currently in the process of building a junkyard, and. Um, this is the perfect time to show you some examples on how to do some rust techniques. And we're going to have one of these old cheap cars here. From like lifelike. Gosh, I, these are probably like 20 years old. I found them, but it, they're great for little junk loads. Um, we have an old Southern Pacific gondola that's going to be rusted up as well. And this Conrail rooftop needs some rust on the top. So we'll show some simple techniques here. First, we'll do the car. All right, let's get the middle. Need this here right now. My favorite colors to use are burnt umber. Like you say, you use a lot of this. This represents really old rust, and you know, the darker the rust, the older it is. So, if you have um, some lighter colors, you show some newer rust. The darker it is, the darker the rust is. And you have you uh, work out in when you're doing uh, rust because again, when you're in the environment of um, looking in the environment, rust is um, basically the environment chipping away at whatever the material is, especially metals, and um, you know it, it becomes a lighter color, then it becomes darker and darker. And so to represent the lighter, we have the goo wash. Burnt sienna. Okay. And then we have yellow ochre. And you're going to see how these three colors can really make some really fine, easy rust. And the reason why I use watercolors is it's easy to clean up. So if you mess up, 
or you, you're nervous about doing it, don't be because these are easy to clean up. You can clean up with water or rubbing alcohol and you can start all over again. So it's not a big deal. And also another color I like to use sometimes is a uh, medium yellow. And uh, sometimes it gets just a light, um, it makes it just a little bit lighter and you can mix it in with the burnt sienna. And it gives it um, that burnt sienna, just a lighter, um, I'm sorry, burnt umber, that, that dark brush, you can light it up just a little bit. And um, burnt sienna sometimes does the same technique, but I like using yellow, uh, medium yellow. And medium yellow looks good, um, especially if you have yellow locomotives like Union Pacific and CSX. Like for instance, on this here, it's already getting faded out on the CSX engine. And I used a Q-tip and went around the yellow on the nose here to represent that it's oh it's going to be rusting soon because the color is starting to fade. So you can use that kind of color for those techniques, um, for those kind of um, you use that technique to uh, re to, rep to represent the, the fading for that. All right, so we're going to do something very simple, and this can be such an easy project. You know, you put some music on or a movie. And you can get started. So, this car, I want to have the rooftop being the oldest rust. So, I am going to take a sponge, and you're going to see why we use the sponge. And you can do a dabbing motion. And with the dabbing, you be you make a texture because the it's so thick. The watercolor, it's 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 um, a very thick uh, material. And um, and if you dab it, you get a bubbly texture on top, and it looks rough, and it's three D compared to using sometimes regular paints. Okay, so I don't know if it's too hard to say. No, there's a glare, but we'll get to a bigger model, and you can totally see the difference. So what I like to do is I give a base color of the raw umber. And you know, sometimes it depends on your car. If you want to do the whole car, you can. Um, or you want to leave some of the old color, which I'm going to do here. Again, this has been in a junkyard for a while. So now you have some of the red showing and you still have all the rust coming out. Now it doesn't look like much, but we're going to add some of that burnt sienna and we're going to represent some light rust being created. We're going to add some of that burnt umber in the mix. And what's cool about the uh, burnt sienna has a little reddish, red orange tone, especially doing a red car. Actually, it makes it look good here. Okay, we did that. A little bit more. And you constantly want that dabbing technique. Now you can see the difference. How much lighter the hood is to the rooftop and just that simple you have lighter rust and and newer rust to an older rust now let's see if you do something here in a second now we're going to use the yellow ochre yellow ochre you can mix with all three and you constantly want to mix it and you're going to get this um mixed color here which is right over here and let's say i want the rear bumper and the rear uh the rear end of this car to have some lighter rust and you constantly want to keep dabbing and dabbing and dabbing yeah a little more the one thing about 
the uh, glue wash. It does dry quick. And so it's a, it's a fast paced type of technique. So sometimes you have to work a little faster. That's the way you won't waste the paint. And so you get the rear bumper. It has a much lighter and newer rust compared to the rest of the vehicle. And so a, fi a finished product would be on this diorama that I built. Just a simple technique. Here's an old car that's cut in half and mow the bushes. And that's the same technique that I used to make that rust. And then we're going to go over here. Let's see if it can be seen. You can see the car right there. It's the same exact technique. You can see how rusted and abandoned it looks. So now we're going to move forward to something uh, probably a little less boring, a little more fun here for everybody. We're going to take this old Southern Pacific gondola and we're going to rust the heck out of it. And I model uh, Arkansas in the uh, late 80s, early 90s, and this car is from 1946. And I'm going to use it as a garbage bin. Eventually, it's going to become a, a uh, bin for scrap. So um, I already dull coated it. So it's, it's ready to go. It has, it has been sealed. And the first step is we're going to take our sponge. And the inside is going to be light and newer rust in the outside. So we're going to take, we're going to dab a lot of that, the yellow ochre, as well as the burnt sienna. And goodness gracious, look at that color. So that looks like a little light rust. And these also will look great into um, ore jennies, as well as, um, um, let's see here, we got ore jennies, um, scrap cars, um, if you're building steel mill operations, these are simple techniques that you can use. And this is a good base coat to uh, just get the car inside nice, nice and rusted out. on the side here and all the nukes and crannies and later you could always add your powders rust um or your different kind of rust powders but see this these three colors or well, these just these two colors alone give it a beautiful rust inside Just like that, that easy. Now, you don't have to dab the whole thing. Let's say you have a box car that's slightly old. You can just dab little dots here and there, just like that, really quickly, and you can get some of that some of that rust effects and those um, little rust spots. You don't have to go individual with a tiny brush. You can use a um, simple sponge to do that. So now we're going to add some of that burnt umber into the mix. I'm going to create some little older rust. So here we go. I'm going to go right on the Southern Pacific. That's your, it could really show. And I'm using that dabbing motion. And really close up when you do it. And you can see it looks like a texture, especially when it dries. Of it bubbling out and it's 3D. And the reason why you want to dab too, you don't want to um, paint it side to side. Is 
you constantly um, giving it a, a layer, a light layer every time, unless you have a lot of paint. I don't put that much paint on here on the uh, sponge because for me, I like some of the. Oh, we lost the camera. <laughs> Let's fix that here. I think the camera got a little excited. There we go. Then we fixed it here. There you go. That was much better. Apparently, the camera likes rust stuff too. All right. So now, just with that technique here, you can see the old side originally. Not even, not even completed yet. And now we have the completed side. And just that simple dabbing gives it just a wonderful looking old rust look, the model. Now we're going to do the other side here. We add a little more of those colors. And like here, I'm going to have some light rust and some newer rust on the edges. Now, technically, if it's this car from the 40s and, you know, modeling the 90s, it's probably going to look completely worn and much more older rust. But since we're uh, showing examples here, I'm going to give it some, uh, some newer rust. Now, we still got the edges to do here. And since this is pretty much dry in the center, I'm going to go back and I'm going to use some of that medium yellow. It's going to lighten up. I mean, that's 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 yellow, you know, <laughs> that's really yellow. Uh, we're going to lighten up the, uh, the rust in the center a little bit. I'm going to go towards the middle, add a little more of that burnt sienna. All right, we do that. I'm going to dab some of that. Oh, that's a pretty color. I'm going to go right in the center. You can see how it's, it's, it's already lightening up. And usually when you do different kind of layers of weathering, you want to seal them. I don't like sealing it just yet with a dull coat or um, another kind of uh, sealer because I want them to constantly blend in with the rust. And you always get these wonderful uh, blends with the paint. And this stuff dries really quickly. That's what I like about it too. It dries really quickly. And so here it is much lighter. And I've got a little glare. But you can see it, it here. So we got to do the other side. Let's knock out the other side. And it'll definitely show when you use that medium yellow and that, that uh, raw ce uh, burnt sienna. And what I'm going to do is lighten this compared to the other side and I'm going to show you how you can have newer rust to older rust so that looks uh that looks pretty orange compared to the other side here which is a much darker looking rust Okay, so for here now, we're going to take our trusty Q-tips, 
and we're going to get some burnt umber use the same technique the dabbing technique and we're going to go in the centers in the center of the model And now, when you're dabbing, you're also kind of taking the, the under layer of paint off. So the SP is starting to show just a little more over here on the model. Let's say I want that number to show just a little bit. So kind of breaking the rule a little bit by sliding it down. We'll take some of the paint off. So maybe we want the SP to show just a little bit more. But you want to finish with that uh, dabbing motion to give that texture look. All right, let's see here. Just the... And, just, and also what's good about the dabbing motion, especially with a Q-tip, is that it blends the paint all together um, from, um, from layer to layer. So it doesn't look like two separate lines of paint. Now, just that burnt umber you can see how we have now the darker rust the older rust blending with the new rust and you can see with the other side it's more older rust completely so not as much character and uh, texture compared to this side here And here's the inside. But we did forget to do the edges around the top of the gondola. So we're going to take, uh, for this color, I want to take a, um, let's see here. I'm going to take the burnt umber and the, and the burnt sienna together. You know, like an orangey kind of color. And I want to go along the edges here. So that way the top of the gondola along the edges has some older rust. But we're going to come back and we're going to add some of that yellow ochre. But that orangey uh, and brown together gives it just a lighter tone. There we go. And the thing with layering is that you'll get all sorts of different uh paint um cut well sorry color all right we got some of the yellow ochre that we're dabbing here give some of that burnt umber dab it with the yellow ochre and it's gonna give again like that that light color so now we have the that little orangey and brown on top. It's very subtle, and it's hard to see. It's very, very subtle. So that way you know. Uh, add a little more, some of the actually medium yellow. It gives it like a, a muddy yellow type of color. So let's see. The one we're looking at is right here. 
that's this color right here. And that's going to really make the rust uh, show. So actually, I'm going to get a little more yellow ochre in this. I just constantly do the dabbing motion. Again, this is so easy. It's not expensive. And it adds a lot to your model. There we go. Starting to sound like Bob Ross. <laughs> A little bit of that bird sienna in it, too. Now, I don't do like one little section of, okay, burnt sienna, and then I'm going to do a little section of some yellow ochre. Um, I like blending layer to layer to layer, and I'll go over the whole thing until I'm satisfied to the colors of what I want it to look like. So, here's now the top of the car. It's probably hard to see here. But, just 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 simple simple rust now let's say we want to add um certain let's say here there's a light starting to come in here a little bit and maybe a little too uh maybe a little better for people to see um you can read now yeah you can really see the rust here just that dabbing motions I think you want to focus here. All right. So now we're going to go to the rooftop of this Conrail boxcar. Now, the one thing about is about these um, boxcars is that you can go, again, completely old rust with some, um, some silver array showing through it. Or you could do something that is pretty light. So, like, here, the darker is that um, burnt umber, and then it goes lighter to less and less rust, showing that it's starting to eat away here, but it's already eating away on this rooftop right here, on this side of the rooftop. And these are the yellow ochre and the burnt sienna colors right here. So you can totally see the difference and look at the texture of the car. And that dabbing motion really gives it a almost a 3D look. And actually just the car that we did uh, for the clinic last time. So everybody gets maybe a clearer image of it now. <laughs> but uh, yeah, that's the top of the rooftop here. Um, and then you can go back and always add um uh what do you call it your powders but before we go to the powders because i want this um uh, little gondola to dry we're going to go into this um box car rooftop so go back to our little paint palette here and uh the cool part about using this this i mean this thing lasted me almost three years and i still got over half of it left to go and once it's dry out, you could take rip a piece and there's your new one. <laughs> so it doesn't have you don't have to use a big piece of sponge. You can use this a little piece here, but I want to get a bigger piece. All right. Now I'm gonna go and use another paint you can use this is a um uh, acrylic, just a regular acrylic um paints will will, will, you, will work well. You can use brown or burnt umber acrylic paints as well as watercolors. I'm going to take a little bit 
of this dark brown acrylic. It is slightly darker and it won't produce the same texture as watercolor, It'll have a smoother look. So that's also another difference of using the watercolor gouache compared to regular acrylic paints and oils. Plus, I like these watercolors because again, it's more forgiving as well as easy, faster for it to, um, to dry. So, all right, we got our, we got our burnt, uh, burnt umber. I'm gonna take a look, dab that burnt umber here on the bottom. And we're gonna, let's say, I say, by the way, the uh, weights need to be glued down in this box car, if you haven't noticed. <laughs> Let's say we're gonna go, we'll do the same technique um, and do the same thing like the other kind of box car. We're gonna go dark all the way to light. So. You can do really heavy rust. That's right here. Or if you don't want as that much rust, you can. You could just splot it on. So it looks like some parts are getting rusted, some parts aren't. I mean, just simple as that, if that's something you like. I don't like that. And we're gonna show how forgiving this technique and these materials are to use. And we're gonna take a little bit of water on the towel. Oh my gosh, that comes right off. And I'm gonna show you another cool technique that you can do with the same thing I'm doing here. You probably noticed while wiping it off, it kind of looks like light streaks or rust just blending into it. And that's another technique you can use. But if you don't want that, you have a fresh palette to start all over again if you don't like it. And that's why I love using these watercolors and acrylics. Because we all make mistakes. We're not all uh, Superman, you know? It'd be nice, I guess. All right. So we're going to go back again. And the one thing about using watercolors, if you're gonna wipe this down, make sure it's really dry because it's watercolors and it dilutes really quickly. <laughs> Otherwise you're gonna have really wet paint on here. So we're gonna go back again and do what we're doing. And we're gonna add some more of this paint. And you can see the dabbing motion. Look at that rust, just looking at. Just that simple. Now I'm gonna have these, um, these oral sections here covered. Now I'm gonna go into the, a little bit of that, uh, that medium yellow with that brown acrylic paint. Mix that in really well, so we can get a um, a lighter rust color now. And see that that yellow and brown gives it 
much lighter tone. And that's just the, it's the yellow medium and the, um, the brown acrylic paint. And this particular one I'm using, that's so no one gets confused here, it's a De La Ra uh, Rowney. I hope I'm saying that right. So I'll show the um, simple stuff you get at Hobby Lobby. But that's the uh, that's the brown paint I'm using. It's slightly darker than um, like Anita's acrylics brown paint. It's not as um, not as light as that Anita's. And Anita's is what I used from the last clinic. I used that for a lot of um, wheel um, wheel sets and uh, train wheels and stuff like that. So now um, I want a really light color on the rust. I'm going to represent new rust here. So we're going to take it that burnt sienna and some of that yellow ochre. And we're going to go right in the center of this box car. So I'm going to go up close here. I'm going to go right in the center. So it looks like it's starting to rust in the center going outward. So now you have a line of that rust. See how light that rust is? So you're going from new rust to somewhat older rust to really older rust. And we did that in what? I don't know, five minutes? So now let's say I'm going to add just what I do is I take from the center and I work my way down. I branch out from the main part of the rust. It looks like it's eating from the inside out. So now this car is starting to chip away. The rooftop's starting to chip away just a little bit. It's starting to rust out. Um, I'm going to take a little bit more of that brown light. Not much because I want this to look like it is a little dark here. I'm going to dab the center of this. Now in the center, it is much darker rust. And the lighter saw and the light rust, the newer rust is um it's done eat away on the edges, but the older rust is in the center again. So that's one simple technique you can do to make a rooftop for a box car. And now I know a lot of people um well, you know, well we all see us over in rail fanning and looking at prototype photos. Um they have the paint around the uh edges of the um of the rooftop itself um, i forget why i just know it by looking at it i think it's uh, a sealer maybe perhaps but you can take regular paint um regular acrylic white paint and what i do is i actually get a little gray because it's too white in my opinion here um a little bit of gray. I'm going to mix that in here. All right. And we're going to take this color. Let's see if I can show it here without the glare. I got the sun coming right in. Feels good to be doing a clinic, not when it's storming outside. <laughs> Last time I did, it was completely storming. I had bad connection. And I live in in Arkansas in the Ozark National Forest, so we're pretty much close to being off grid as you can get around here. Beautiful area, um, but yeah, last time the um, I had a, a really bad connection written with the storm, so I understand Mike's pain when he couldn't come off for the last clinic. I hope he comes on. He does some really nice work. Um, all right, so we're gonna get some an edge an edger paintbrush. And we're going to go along the edges here, right over our rust. And so I'm going to get those lines 
here on the top of a box car. So we'll have just those four will have lines on top of the box car. So the seat, I blow on it. No, not really. Um, it's pretty much dry as it is, but a trusty way would be, not a trusty way, but be careful, but a faster way would be using a little blow dryer. In my last clinic, I showed that you don't want to go too close to it, about six to eight inches away from the model. Then we're just going to both coat this top and let that dry. And you just, you can watch paint dry or go to the next, um, the next model. And so we're going to go back to our gondola and we're going to do some. Let's see what time they've got 20 minutes beautiful all right and we are going to do some weathering powders here just simple simple stuff um bragdanet.com is uh some of the stuff i use i like i like the, the stuff he uses here um some light some light rust some dark rust i'm gonna use some medium darker rust here um on this car and oh, you have to um the i would suggest working with a um with a prototype photo when you're doing these kind of rush with these powders because you can make it look completely um uh, unrealistic or maybe over the top of rust but it depends on what you want to do um so what first with this car um i'm gonna we're gonna spray this first actually and we'll get back to this i want to spray this i forgot to do that All right, that will dry. All right, let's see here. I have a, uh, here she is. I am actually in the process of weathering this for a client of mine. And he's probably gonna freak out that I'm doing this around the world for him. <laughs> so, but um, I'm going to add a light a lighter shade of rust to the top of the rooftop of this SD60 by Athen Genesis. And um, I started the process here of rusting the top. But I'm going to make it a li slightly lighter, and you're going to see uh, a big difference on the top of the rooftop here. So we're going to, again, use our um, burnt sienna. And the reason why I'm doing this too is the fact that you, if you, if you have expensive models you really want to weather and you haven't done it before, you're too afraid. Start with something as cheap as the Southern Pacific gondola that I that I had for like years and years. Um, you know, start on older cars and um, older pieces of rolling stock, cheap rolling stock that you're not afraid to mess up, um, and then get to your models. Um, so. So that's why I'm going to do this here because now it's kind of looking like, oh, well, I, I kind of figured out what the what I want to do. Now I'm going to go on to a really expensive locomotive model and really try my techniques out. So now this definitely looks unrealistic, but that's what the Burg Sienna looks like with a little bit of that yellow ochre in it. And obviously we're not going to keep it like that. I mean, come on. We're going to add some of that brown. I'm going to dab some of that brown on there. And, and just really darken it just a shade more than what it was. Just a shade, slight shade more. But we're going to add some of that um, burnt umber here. And I really need to buy more burnt umber. I use this stuff so much. It's like candy for weathering. All right. Give some of that here. And we're going to dab. Uh, 
voila, I'm happy with that. So we'll just darken it a little bit. Now we got the, the burnt umber on top of the lighter rust, which is on the edges. So now that looks like it's starting to rust out. And we know the SC60s, you know, and SC70s were pretty beaten up towards the end of their time with Norfolk Southern. So um, there's a little representation of that. Now, another little technique is, okay, well, it's burnt on top there. Does the paint chip away? Well, of course it does. And you can see from this old model that I built, uh, making little um, toaster here. And basically it's just simple gray. I'm gonna get a little closer here for you guys. Right here, it's really just simple um, gray acrylic paint, flat of course. And actually have some here already from when we worked on the uh, box car. And what I'm going to do is, again, you want to use your uh, trustees, Q-tips, light amount of paint, and you can go over the edges. I mean, just like that. To me, that's way too much, so I'm going to get rid of some of it. Am I? Nope. You could just, if you don't want to get rid of it, and you're scared to um, erase the work you just did with your rust, you can take a Q-tip, go over what you did with your rust, and blend in that gray. So now, it shows like subtle, the paint is still chipping away, and you still have your rust there. Um, another tool to use, which I love, I love these things, very cheap to get them at the store here. Um, these dental picks, these work, uh, these work really well. And what I do is I take a little bit of paint on the tips and I make little lines. I recently did a video on how to create a toaster on YouTube for touch of the brush model weathering, which is my business. And um, I showed that technique here. And it was, uh, it was actually featured with scalatrains.com, which was an awesome, awesome honor. And I created a toaster unit with their Dash 9s. And so what it is, you take it's, it's a little bit of paint on the uh, tip of the, um, of, the, of the dental pick. And you take some of the gray paint, so it looks like a line is um, starting to form where the paint's being chipped away, turning into rust or being burnt. Um, and so like for me, I probably put a little too much on there. So are we gonna get rid of it? No, because you could easily be fixed or blended in and as simple as um, just breaking off the tip of your Q-tip. So now we're left with like the little skinny stick part and we're going to dab that rush right into that gray the heads paint. Up, Joey, about two or three minutes, and we'll jump into some questions. We have our lines. And now you have the rust and the, the gray blending in. So it looks like it's the paint's chipping away and turning into rust. So we'll keep that there to dry and later I'll still coat it and tell my client, hey buddy, it's done. Time to ship it out and you can enjoy your model on your layout. So all right, so now we got this pretty much dry here, this gondola. And only got a few, uh, couple more minutes here, but I'll show some simple um, rust that we can do. We'll dab some of that rust here. And, and what I like about um, the school wash paint is that you can seal it and it's already a sticky substance and you can just add some of that rust 
dab it right on there in certain spots that you really want to lighten up. So I get a little more of that texture look. And you can see that's the powders that's slightly lighter than the other um, parts of the paint. So let's see here, a little more here with that. Good here. We're gonna take some some old tuck, Tuscan color and a dark rust. I'm gonna go inside the car itself. Let's see here. I got that. Oh, here it is, right over here. This uh, really, really um, light, um, fluffy brush here, dry brush. And let's say we want to add some of that rust here on the edges. We do that. Take some of that uh, red Tuscan color. Get around the edges here to get the edges all done. And that's that. So this one's ready to be a bin for my um for my little junkyard. So um I, let's see here. Let me uh Perfect, Joey. We yeah. might jump into some questions uh, out of the, sure. the chat, if you don't mind. Yeah. So first question, that, and there's a lot of these. Can you just quickly go over the um, acrylics that you use, the brands, the colors, um, yeah. and just list those out again for everyone? Absolutely. These are, these are Goo Wash fine, by Fine Touch, uh, Goo Wash watercolors. Uh, G O U A C H E. That's goo wash. Fine Touch is a brand, one of the cheaper brands that I get at Hobby Lobby. It's like seven ninety nine to like ten bucks for the whole pack. Um, there are other goo wash paints that are more expensive. So if you're um, uh, you, you're more experienced and you want to uh, further your your knowledge and make more finer um, rust and all, all different techniques for paints then you know, go more expensive. I have so much of the stuff left that I use this. Plus, since we're using stuff for beginners, I'm using the beginner's paint as shown here. Um, also, I use um, Daler Ronnie, Round, Rounding. It's D-A-L-E-R-R-O-W-N-E-Y, and that's these acrylic paints. Um, same place, Hobby Lobby, seven ninety nine to fourteen dollars, depending on the types you get. Um, also, fine um, fine touch also makes um, oils, and so I also use um, some oil paints with that too. Um, I also use Anita's acrylics. This is a uh, flat brown, flat black from the last clinic. Um, these what I, I blend these together to make. Um, the wheel sets for um, uh, train wheels. So, for instance, that color is shown right here. Just the the um, the brown and black mixed together gives that um, color of the trucks and uh, and the wheels. And of course, it adds some powders to it. So, those are the uh, main materials I use when doing these uh, the the painting for the rust. Okay. Uh, another question now. The chat, Pat asked, how much do you rely on prototype uh, photos for your rust effects as reference? Um, I do a lot. And from experience of just driving where I live, there's so many old barns and sheds. And even going trackside, I take pictures of barn sheds, rails. 
and I look at how this how rust um, uh, is created, and uh, you can see what's old, what's new, and just by knowing the difference of newer rust and older rust, you can really tell how the effects and how the um, the way the uh, rust accumulates on a um, on the material, and uh, so I just rely on a lot of the prototypes and from looking at it i can go into a model and and just work with it compared to like the csx engine where it is completely from the client that i have you know he gave me everything that i needed to know he wanted to look like and like it's not even done yet this is just the base colors for these for the um for the rust streaks and everything you know so I try to do it um, the best I can to create this. So that way it looks just like the model itself. Okay. Um, another question was, what's your thoughts on using an airbrush for the rust effects? I have it. I, I've still... And you, um, in training for an airbrush, I actually had one of my airbrush break about a couple months ago. So I've been really um, learning how to use just regular paints. Um, so I'm not really familiar with using the airbrush. Doesn't mean I won't. I'm in the process of ordering a new one. And I'm actually really looking forward to really learning how to use an airbrush for weathering. And I think it's a, it's a fantastic tool and I, I feel that I'll probably use the same techniques with how, how rust will be made, uh, how is rust created rather, and, um, and uh, with using an airbrush. Okay. Uh, James has also asked um, in the chat, why that brand of paint rather than um, just a plain acrylic? So I'm assuming instead of a, a $2 shop acrylic. Um, these acrylics that I, um, I had for a while when I, uh, um, before I started learning use rust and I just learned with, with the materials that I had already, um, and like the effects that are, that it has given me and you can see it just drying that it's already showing a, um, not if I'm doing that and you can see how it wipes off. But it's really getting like a bubbly texture and it's a 3D texture. And that's what the watercolor, goo wash watercolor does. It gives it a, a real thick texture and it, it pops out then trying to create something that's 2D. You're really having 3D rust on a model um, when using the um, goo wash. It has to be goo wash. Any other watercolors won't work. Um, it's because of the style and the type of paint that and that is made in, into these tubes. Um, I really enjoyed the, um, like, well, for instance, the, uh, the Dale Rodney, <laughs> I, I, I had it, you know, and I started using it when I started running out of the uh, burnt umber and it's, it's a much softer, um, material, um, material base compared to the, um, thickness, thickness of the, um, the rust. So if I mix them, the watercolor with that, that, that really soft acrylic, it, shows the it comes out the same result with that bubbly 3d texture okay well uh we're pretty much at the end of our time here so um i'd like to thank you again joey for a great weathering and and another really well put together presentation so i'm uh I'm going to hand it over to these guys. I'm done for a night and um, we'll go from there. Thanks for watching. Yeah. Absolutely. Thank you guys for um, inviting me back again. It's really been an honor. I look forward to more as well. Perry, before you, you enjoy before, your claim, buddy. Before you go, Joey, we had a couple of um, comments in the chat during, the, uh, during your clinic and someone suggested that maybe next time uh, you can put a list of materials you're going to use out beforehand and what you're going to weather, and they'll actually weather along with Joey. That could be another show. You never know. Yeah, that'd be fun. And, uh, I've done yeah, that before on YouTube. So. They'll do it in real time. And um, uh, someone else also asked, yes, can you give me yeah. a list of all the um, 
uh, people on uh, all the materials you used, and I'll put that on the YouTube video in the comments section. Yep, I can. I can do that and send it to you. Yep. Okay, we'll Sounds hand good. it over. Thanks a million, mate. Absolutely. Thank you so much, guys. You guys enjoy.